Well, welcome back on this Easter week as we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ and we are having a special service to that end. The passage of scripture that we'll be looking at is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read through the, the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ on our uh, service or part of our service. And I'm going to preach on this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, which is the implications of how the resurrection affects you and I on a daily basis. So let's have a word of prayer, and we will look at this text. Father, thank you for your word, and thank you for the fact that Christ is alive, even now as we are praying. We know that you hear us. We know that the Lord Jesus is on his throne reigning in majesty, and we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, it's not a large portion of Scripture to look at today, and of course, Sunday will be a, a, an abbreviated message simply because of the um, amount of singing and Scripture reading. Uh, and then we're going to look at this application of the resurrection, and it is from Paul's writing to the church in Corinth, where he wrote about the practical implications of how the resurrection affects us. We have to realize we're not celebrating a historical event like a battle or some memorial uh, activity, but rather we are celebrating the fact of how the resurrection over 2,000 years ago has daily impact in our lives as Christians as well as in the lives of believers around the world. So let me pull up this passage, and we're going to look at it because it is the hope that Paul shared with the church in Corinth, and it's the hope that we have as well. Okay, here we pull up the passage. And Paul had been talking in the previous chapter the fact that, that you know, we do have afflictions in our lives. And so this passage here, Paul is talking about the implications of the resurrection and uh, knowing that the afflictions that we go through are temporary and the glory that will be revealed is is worth it all and so he says for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed he's talking about our human bodies the afflictions that we go through even if it means to the point of death and notice he, what he calls our bodies. He calls them tents, realizing that they're just something that is temporary. We're born, we live, we die. All of us have that entire lifespan that's under 100 years. Probably none of us will reach 100. Occasionally someone does. But the reality is it's a tent. It is a very temporary uh, thing that we have. And yet it's not corrupt. The Lord made uh, the bodies to be a uh, representation of the glory that he gives us. And the fact that Christ came uh, in a bodily form proves that the body itself, the human body, is not something to be despised, but rather the fact that it has been corrupted by sin that it is to be despised, but not the body itself, because we know that there will be a glorified body, just as the Lord Jesus had himself. For he says, we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God. Now there's a comparison, a tent to a building. The building is to reveal the fact that what God has in store for us is not temporary, it doesn't last just a hundred years, but it is eternal, it is continual, it is solid, it cannot be ripped down, it cannot be torn down, it not, does not get uh, afflicted, it is solid, it is a building. We have a building from God. Now again, what model do we have? We have the model of Christ in his glorified state, in his permanent state. We have a building from God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now, when it means it's not made by hands, 
It is not something that is human made. It is not something that is temporary. It is not something that is prone to failure. It is not something that in any way has the touch of humanness or sin on it. It is a building from God. It is an eternal home. And so what we know is this. Because of the fact that the Lord Jesus did indeed rise from the grave, he conquered death. He conquered the fear of death. He conquered the penalty of sin. And he has provided not just simply our souls to be saved, but he has also provided the hope that there will be a new body glorified, just like he had in his resurrected form while he was on earth. That resurrected body was identifiable. It ate food. It's he, the Lord Jesus sat on the seashore and ate fish with his disciples. It was recognizable in every way. It was both uh, human and yet glorified. What we look forward to is the body that the Lord has modeled for us in the resurrection. Someday when the Lord Jesus returns, um, that is when we will receive that glorified body. Until the day that the Lord returns, we call this period of time the intermediate state. The intermediate state is the period of time between when you die, whether it be today or tomorrow or whenever, until the time that the Lord Jesus returns. When the Lord Jesus does return, everybody in heaven will come with him. Heaven will be emptied, and we will, at that point, um, meet the Lord, and we will be glorified, and we will receive the Lord glorified like body. So everything that Christ had in the, those days on earth when he was glorified before he ascended back into heaven is a beautiful picture of what you will have. We will have a body that is eternal, uh, that is not made with uh, any tainted sin upon it. It will be a body that is eternal. And uh, we know th from the writings in the book of Revelations, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, the home of the righteous. And it'll be on that new earth that we will have these glorified bodies and we will be in the presence of the Lord Jesus in his glorified body. And so the Lord Jesus is forever in a body that is glorified, and we will be in a body that is glorified, and we will walk and live for eternity as the Lord always intended us to, in a, and on a uh, renewed earth without Satan or sin or temptation or death or failures that sin has brought upon us. And so, going back to the text, for we know that if this tent uh, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan. Now, what does he mean by that? It means we just both look forward to that glorified body and we get fed up with aches and pains and the frailty of life and the all the failures of our body and all the failures of sin and the, and the effects that sin has had on these human bodies. We groan. We say, oh, Lord, get me out of this mess. And so we groan, looking to put on our heavenly dwelling. Now, we don't receive that glorified body until the second coming of Christ. We are absent from the body. And we are present with the Lord, which means when you die, we will take your remains and they'll either be cremated or they'll be put into a casket and they'll be laid in the ground. And that's where they will remain in their frailty until the second coming of Christ, when they will be changed and made like unto his own glorified body. So those who are currently uh, in heaven are absent from the body. They are there in the presence of their spirit. Um, and it seems from the story of Lazarus, they have knowledge of what is going on. They are aware of their circumstance. They are not in soul sleep, 
but they are conscious, aware uh, of, of the circumstance, and they're probably of each other that are there as well. Okay. And it says, we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. So that's longing for our glorified bodies in the uh, second coming of Christ. If indeed, by putting it on, we may not be found naked. Now, what does that mean? We will not be found naked. It means we will not be spirit souls forever. Though we do not have a human body during this intermediate time, we will not be found naked. Our eternity is not in some spirit form. It will be a physical, actual, glorified body. The body that we have now will decay but the Lord will resurrect it into glory, okay? So that, that's, that's something we need to, to realize, that all of our loved ones, um, we know where their bodies are buried, or they were cremated, and we have them, or we buried them, or scattered them, or something along that line. But the Lord, on his coming, will gather together the remains in some wonderful way of who they were, and it will be transformed like his perfect body. For while we are still in this tent, as Paul says, we groan. I love that. We groan. Being burdened. Not that we want to be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So that what is mortal, that being our human, may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. And so what he's saying is, we groan, we groan, we say, oh, Lord, I can't wait to be in your presence. I can't wait for that glorified body. I can't wait to walk on the renewed earth. I can't wait for the eternity that is prepared for the believers where we have fellowship in a real sense, in a real conscious sense, in your presence with all of those who love the Lord. What a great and wonderful day that will be. But until then, he has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. So we know for sure that these things will happen because God indwells us. God has sealed us. The Holy Spirit marks us as his own and it is a deposit guaranteeing not just our redemption, but guaranteeing that glorified body as well. And so Paul continues, he says, So we are always of good courage. For while we're at home in the body, while we're here, we are away from the Lord. That's true. We're not, we're not in heaven, but we're on earth. For we walk by faith not by sight. I, I don't see that glorified body. I don't see the spirits in heaven, but I believe indeed they're absent from the body and present with the Lord. Yes, we are of good courage. We would rather be away from this body and at home with the Lord. Paul says, I would much rather be in heaven right now than fighting the crazy people of this world and the politics and the corruption and the sin and the evil. But I'd rather be with you, Lord, than than having to go through all this. I would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. doesn't matter where I am, whether I'm here on earth or in heaven, I will please the Lord. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's interesting, right? Not to be condemned, but to receive our rewards. For that which one may receive, what is due, for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. And so the reality is there will be that great day of judgment. And in that day of judgment, uh, the things that we have done on this earth, in this body, um, which have been completely forgiven and completely paid for and completely washed away, uh, will be judged and found innocent in the blood of Christ. It is that picture of redemption that we will stand before the judge and be declared innocent because of the fact 
that Christ is our Redeemer and Redeemer. So what a wonderful application that we have that still is in effect. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to impact all of us unless Christ returns in the sense that our bodies will groan, our bodies will fail, and then finally we'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But if the Lord should return today or tomorrow or during our life, we will be saved from the pain of death and be immediately transformed into that glorified body when we are caught up to meet him in the air and then continue to glorify him um, in the days that follow. Okay, so what a great thing. This is, the, this is the practical application of the resurrection. Yes, Jesus is alive, not just simply to forgive you, but to give you current hope that what is yet ahead for you is completely preserved. It is completely safe. We have the Spirit of God guaranteeing that these things are yet to occur in your life and in my life. And for that, we praise the Lord because it's not just a holiday we're celebrating, but it's what is yet ahead for us. There is so much ahead for us. And we groan and look forward to the glory that is yet, that is yet to be revealed. All right? Well, Lord bless. And uh, as we look forward to Sunday, just pray, bring your friends. Uh, this is a great opportunity to hear the gospel. So bring your friends if possible. Invite them. And uh, let us rejoice and celebrate in our resurrected Savior.